<clears throat> All right, what's up everybody? Grim Green back here today. Thank you so much for joining me. I just wanted to spend a little time and compare these two VGOD box mods. So this is the 2017 Elite 200 watt box mod, and this is the 2018 Pro 200 watt box mod, both from VGOD, both very similarly shaped and styled box mods. They both have thumb triggers right here. I kind of hold them the exact same way. I end up tucking my pinky underneath and hitting the fire button with my thumb right there. I'm generally a person that likes to hold my mod like this and hit the fire button right there. So I kind of wish, I kind of wish that both of these had the button right there, but you know, it's whatever. I can't go back in time. They're thumb fire buttons, so that's what I have to live with. Now it's gonna be a little bit weird comparing the Pro 200 watt box mod with the Elite 200 watt box mod because the Elite series from VGOD is like their much higher end line. This is full stainless steel and aluminum construction. It just feels overall much higher quality than this Pro box mod. The Pro box mod is also about $100 cheaper than this Elite one here from 2017. And the quality on it does kind of show a little bit of difference. Just taking a look at the 2017 Elite box mod, you have this full stainless steel hinged button up here. It just overall feels a lot higher quality in the hand. The whole fit and finish of the Elite 200 watt box mod from 2017 just feels all around much nicer. It all fits together much better. This tank right here is just for demonstration purposes. This is from the RevTech mods. And then focusing our attention a little bit on the 2018 Pro 200 watt box mod. Yeah, you can see there's a couple like, I don't know, maybe little fit and finish issues. There's kind of this big gap that runs along the top of the battery door right here. And just even looking at the way that the door hits the mod from the front, you can see on this side, yeah, it fits nice and flush. And then over here, I don't know, there's like a little gap on the side. It kind of gets wider as you go down. The adjustment buttons up and down are just two plastic little clicky buttons. The biggest bummer about this mod, in my opinion, is the screen. I don't love it. It's real small. It is multicolored, but it feels overall cheaper than the last year's version. Both of these mods, these chips, these displays, have the same basic functions. They do full wattage mode. They have a 4.2 volt mechanical unregulated mode. There is a full range of temperature control on here as well as a curve mode if you're into that. I am not. I just run these in straight wattage mode. But even just comparing these two screens together, you can kind of get the vibe that this Pro 200 watt box mod screen, it just I don't know. It just looks a little bit cheaper to me. Even though it is like a full color display and your battery level indicators are green and you have the other colors there, it overall just looks like a, a cheaper screen to me and is pretty noticeably smaller. The door on the Pro 200 is just held on by two large magnets right there. I got my batteries in there, some ODB wraps. There's a ribbon on the inside for getting your buttons out. The battery sled's pretty clearly marked positive, negative, negative, positive. That's how your batteries are gonna go in, batteries go in, door goes back on. It's a real simple mod, real straightforward. This is the same atomizer. Obviously between the Elite Steel 200 watt box mod and the Pro 200 watt box mod, you're gonna notice a little bit of a quality difference. The Elite, like I've said before, it just feels much nicer, feels much higher quality and more substantial in the hand. The Pro, it's a little bit of a step down. There's some fit and finish issues. I don't love the screen, I don't love the adjustment up down buttons. They just look cheap and plasticky as compared to these like slick, like low profile, like real clicky stainless steel buttons. But that's kind of bound to happen when the Elite is $180 and the Pro is only around $90. Now the Elite does not come with a sub ohm tank. This is a sub ohm tank from RevTech, but the Pro does come with its own VGOD sub ohm tank, which is a perfectly serviceable sub ohm tank. It is very simple. It is very straightforward. It has a coil head that you plug into the base. You're going to prime up your coil head and you're going to fill it through the top. You do get all sorts of spare O-rings as well as a spare, uh, yeah, we're going to take a look at that in a second. This is a spare grommet for like uh, refilling. The refilling system on this is just very slightly different and so they included a spare one. You get a smoky glass and then these are the coil heads for it and as you can see the coil heads for this sub-ohm tank are not mesh in any capacity. That is 
definitely a round wire coil head in there. It's a pretty damn good little vape and it's been giving me some pretty damn good flavor. Now this is a proprietary drip tip on there, which means it just kind of threads on. It's not 510 or 810 compatible. So, you know, whatever, that's the drip tip. If you're gonna be using this tank, that's the drip tip you're gonna be using. There's no other options. Now you can kind of see right here, these juice fill holes are kind of completely sealed off. So what you need to do is there's a little split that goes down here. So you actually press your juice bottle into the tank, like into the tank. Blech. You can just top it off and then screw this back down on there. Real simple. It's a sub ohm tank. And one thing that this sub ohm tank does that drives me absolutely insane is that bubble. Do you see that bubble right there covering the V-God logo? No matter what I do, no matter how many times I fill it, shake it up all you want, that bubble, it's just gonna stay there and it's just gonna annoy the hell out of me. On both sides, there is a bubble covering the V-God logo. And it will never, ever go away. Obviously, it doesn't affect the way that it vapes. It's just, in my opinion, shit, man. It's a little bit of an eyesore. Now, I'm not saying that every sub ohm tank from V-God is going to do this. I only can review what I have in front of me, and this V-God sub ohm tank that comes with the Pro 200 watt box mod, Bubble. Bubble there, it just never goes away, dude. So real quick, before we get back out to normal view and vape these, this is, I believe, made out of aluminum. It doesn't say on the site, but I believe the body of this is made out of aluminum and it is a sort of textured feel to it. It doesn't feel very smooth. It almost feels like a very, very, very fine grit sandpaper. It almost feels like Cerakoted aluminum. I'm not even sure if it is possible to Cerakote aluminum, but but that's the only way I can describe this. That's how it feels. If you've ever held a Cerakoted mod, that's exactly what this feels like. It's a little bit, it's a little bit rough. It's a little bit grippy. So yeah, that is the Pro 200 watt V-God box mod next to the Elite 200 watt V-God box mod. And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna get back out to normal view and we are going to vape on these just a little bit more. So yeah, V-God Pro 200 watt box mod. Let's real quickly talk about this sub ohm tank. So the sub ohm tank, it's a fine sub ohm tank. It actually vapes really well. The coil heads on the inside are not mesh. It's round wire. It feels saturated. It feels flavorful. I'm vaping, uh, uh, what the crap juice is this? White Label Juice Co. White Gummy Bear, and, and it tastes pretty delicious in this tank. The airflow is fine. It's not overly smooth. It doesn't feel like overly satisfying, but it definitely doesn't feel like sharp or spongy or like, uh, you know, turbulent in any way. But like I've said in the past about a lot of sub ohm tanks, this is, this sub ohm tank is fine. It will vape just Fine. I don't like that it's not like uh, an 810 drip tip compatible or any other drip tip compatible. You have to use this drip tip that comes with this sub ohm tank. But it's good. I mean, and I mean, it's a good little vape. Now, as for the box mod itself, I've been having, I don't know, it's a fine box mod. I've been having a good time with it. It feels like a lower quality box mod than like the Elite 200 watt box mod, but I definitely think that's on purpose. This is a little bit lower tier of a, like of a quality product in the V-God lineup. So I think that the Pro series is never going to be able to kind of stand up to that Elite series. The Elite series overall, like I've said, it just feels nicer. It feels nicer overall. It's one of those like undeniable things when you when you hold two products in your hand, you can kind of instantly tell, okay, well this one's heavier, this one feels nicer, the fit and finish looks better on it, the fit and finish feels nicer on it. Overall it feels less cheap, feels a little bit more solid in the hand. The V-God Elite 200 watt box mod from a year ago is 
also substantially more expensive. They weren't in stock on the site, but these are around $180. And the pro version of the 200 watt box mod is only about $90. So it's a pretty substantial jump in vape budget hands. Overall, these box mods are very, very similarly styled. Like I said before, you kind of hold them the same way. The fire buttons are kind of in the same spot. They both have the same feet features as far as the chip and the board go to, goes as far as like access to all of that temperature control stuff, straight wattage mode, bypass mode. And as much as I really love VGOD and as much as I really like the VGOD mods that they've released, both of these box mods suffer from that thing that VGOD mods have kind of always done, at least their regulated mods have kind of always done. There is that little bit of delay. I would love to see VGOD have a little bit more snap happy, like responsive of a trigger, like a more responsive button on their mods. As it stands with both of these mods, I can press the button and nothing happens. And that's how you know there's a little bit of lag in there. What you want to see when you press the button is just fire. You want to press the button and you want to have it fire like right away. Unfortunately, both of these box mods suffer from that little bit of lag and the Elite one, it's worse than I remember it. I am still a pretty big fan of this Elite box mod. It's something that comes out fairly often and I like to use it regularly, but I've noticed that it is really unresponsive. I can press the button before anything happens. You can just press the button, nothing happens press the button, nothing happens. That's kind of a bummer, man. That's kind of a big lag. And the Pro Series Box Mod does the exact same thing. I can press the button and nothing happens. It's not until you like press the button and then hold it down that it'll actually start firing. Ready? So we've kind of already talked about this, but are you gonna need your vape budget hands? So the Pro Box Mod, and I've already said this, comes in at about $90, and the Elite Box Mod, which isn't in stock on their website, came out in 2017, is almost $190. It's almost a $200 box mod. So definitely, yeah, vape budget hands are something to consider. If you're a fan of VGOD, like I'm a pretty big fan of VGOD and you've always wanted a VGOD box mod, the Elite is gonna be real expensive and the Pro is gonna be a little bit more I don't know, reasonable. I don't wanna say it's like a bargain mod, but for $100 cheaper than the Elite, the Pro does kind of fall into that little bit of like a bargainy category. So I guess now if we were gonna play the Aliens game or the FDA game where they come and take everything I have and I have nothing left to vape, which box mod am I gonna go for? Truly and honestly, I like the Elite Box Mod much more than I like the Pro Box Mod. I feel like they maybe cut a few too many corners on that Pro Box Mod in order to keep that price down. It feels a little bit cheaper overall. I don't love the display. I don't love the plastic buttons. I don't like all the fit and finish like gaps and issues, especially with like the door. And you can, I mean, it didn't show up on video very well, but even looking at it at the bottom right here, the door doesn't sit on here completely flush. I can look and I can see the edge of the door like poking up over the side. And I do realize like with the exception of that laggy switch that is found on both of these mods, a lot of these are just real nitpicks. It's a fine mod. It's going to have plenty of power. It's going to have plenty of battery life, dual 18650s, wattage mode, bypass mode, temperature control mode. This mod's going to do anything you kind of want it to do. It's just not going to feel as nice maybe, or as solid or as durable as something from the Elite series. And as I always say, ultimately the decision is going to be yours to make. YouTube doesn't allow links in the description, so you're going to have to use your Google Foo, but that's what I got for today, everybody. VGOD Pro Series 200 watt box mod. Thank you so much for watching everybody. And as always, no matter which one you choose, let's keep on vaping.